Now, the stuff we teach here and have for almost 30 years is proven. It's no longer an opinion. It's not a theory. I don't agree with Dave Ramsey's advice, which would make you wrong. Who doesn't dream of financial freedom, where every dollar works for you, not against you? Today, we'll debunk money myths and reveal mindset shifts aligned with guru Dave Ramsey's teachings. You'll discover how small, daily choices compound into huge results. These aren't quick fixes. They're habits that transform your whole relationship with money. We'll show you how Ramsey's back-to-basics approach can help you gain control, wipe out debt, and build real wealth without penny-pinching. Get ready to reconsider what you've been told about personal finance. The first step is opening your mind. It's time to start thinking differently about your money and changing your financial future by avoiding these common myths. Let's get started. How's it going to feel when you don't have any debt and have $10,000 in the bank? It's going to feel really good. We call that financial peace. But you're going to pay a price to get there. You're going to have to live like no one else. So later you can live and give like no one else. After World War II, America experienced rapid economic growth. As wages rose, more middle-class families could afford houses, cars, and consumer goods with debt financing. Over decades, this lifestyle funded by credit normalized. Today, over 80% of Americans carry debt month to month from credit cards, auto loans, student loans, and mortgages. But while access to debt increased, so did delinquencies and bankruptcies. Stagnating wages meant many households used debt to live beyond their means. Still, a mindset persists that debt is essential for modern living. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. If you didn't pay for the item 100% in cash on the spot, you can't afford it. Spending money has become effortless, but the downside is that most of it is spent through credit cards and borrowed money. As Dave pointed out, poor people tend to make impulse purchases with money they don't have. However, you can avoid this by putting items you want on hold for some time. For instance, if you're considering buying a new pair of shoes, wait for a day and see how you feel about them. It's possible that your desire to purchase them will diminish, and you'll save yourself $60. Just because debt is common doesn't mean it should be accepted as normal. In Dave's words, debt isn't normal. It's an immense financial burden costing you thousands in interest, limiting your options, and causing unnecessary stress. Dave cites studies showing that Americans pay $120 billion in credit card interest and fees each year, money wasted that could be better used to invest and build wealth. Carrying long-term debt can limit flexibility to handle sudden job loss or medical emergencies. Moreover, mounting payments can cause anxiety, depression, and marital strain for millions of people. However, Dave Ramsey suggests the debt snowball method as an effective approach to pay off debt. This method does not require complex calculations, but rather focuses on changing behavior. Instead of prioritizing interest rates, you arrange your debts from smallest to largest and concentrate on paying off the smallest one first. Meanwhile, you continue making minimum payments on the larger debts. Once the smallest debt is cleared, you roll that payment into the next smallest one and keep repeating the process. Every time you clear a debt, it gives you a psychological boost, creating momentum and inspiration to tackle the next one. The debt snowball method offers a clear roadmap to becoming debt-free, one small triumph at a time. Although it might not be the quickest method, the emotional satisfaction derived from clearing debts will motivate you to stay on track. Before we get into the nitty-gritty details of myth number two, let us know in the comments, do you budget currently, or does it sound too restrictive? Weigh in and don't forget to tap that like button if you're finding this helpful so far. Change. Change. You can decide. When you go home, you can decide to do a budget today. Get out a yellow pad or go free budget online, everydollar.com. You, you can decide today. I'm going to start managing money well. Today. Today. Dave loves busting money myths, and one of them is that budgeting limits your lifestyle and prevents you from enjoying life. Many people assume that if they have to stick to a budget, they won't be able to do what they want. However, Dave is quick to point out that having a budget doesn't reduce freedom. In fact, it provides freedom. 
By carefully budgeting all of your expenses, identifying priorities, and planning your spending each month, you gain control over your finances. You no longer have to wonder, where did my money go every month since you now have a plan? Therefore, you can make intentional choices to spend on things that bring you joy while still meeting your goals. A good budget aligns your expenses with your values and prevents you from overspending, leading to debt and financial stress when unexpected bills arise. You don't have to wait until everything stabilizes to start doing a budget. As a matter of fact, the only way it will stabilize is to do a budget this month and then do a budget next month and then do a budget next month. Sticking to a budget requires discipline, but it leads to new levels of financial freedom that you may have never experienced before. It may seem restrictive at first, but as you watch your financial plans succeed each month, you'll understand why Dave is so adamant that budgeting provides freedom, not limits it. Budgeting helps you live below your means, which is another pillar of Ramsey's smart frugal living habits. The concept is simple yet profound, spend less than you earn. Many people elevate their lifestyle as their income increases, a phenomenon known as lifestyle inflation. While it's natural to want better things, unchecked spending could lead to financial strain. To avoid this trap, Ramsey suggests setting up a budget, prioritizing needs over wants, and avoiding unnecessary debt. It's not about denying yourself enjoyment, but about making conscious spending decisions. This might involve choosing a used car over a new one, cooking at home more often, or cutting back on premium subscriptions. By doing this, you free up more of your income for saving, investing, and debt repayment. In essence, living below your means sets the foundation for long-term financial stability and prosperity. If you don't currently budget, commit to starting one today. Sticking to a budget takes some discipline, but it quickly provides a sense of control over your financial life. No longer will you feel lost about where your money disappears each month. Get Rich Quick has never worked at any time in the world as an ongoing, provable, sustainable process. It's always, and that's where the tortoise and the hare, Aesop's fable comes from. Many individuals today are tempted by stories of fast wealth through hot investments, get-rich seminars, or speculation. However, the idea of building substantial wealth overnight is a tempting myth. This myth is something that Dave Ramsey strongly disagrees with. The belief that getting rich is a quick process that can happen overnight with the right investment, scheme, or windfall. Dave argues that real wealth takes a lifetime to build through consistency, hard work, and disciplined saving and investing over many years. When you pursue shortcuts to gain wealth quickly, it often leads down a path of dangerous speculation, gambling, and excessively high investment risk. Dave cautions against being enticed by multi-level marketing pitches, hype-driven investments, and get-rich seminars. More often than not, the guru promising you quick wealth is really just trying to make money off of you. Instead, Dave advocates establishing multiple streams of steady, predictable income that you build slowly over time. Create diverse sources of income by pursuing education and training in fields that are in demand. Look for ways to monetize existing skills and hobbies at night or on weekends. Invest regularly in diversified, low-fee funds rather than speculate on hot stocks or cryptocurrency gambles. With a slow, steady pace, you'll be surprised at how your net worth grows over decades without chasing risky schemes. You start to realize then the more money you're managing, the more people you can help. Because at a certain point, that you can't ingest enough stuff. It, you know, if you eat an, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I never had lobster. That was the, red lobster came to town, it was a big deal. Right? And if I got lobster with that drawn butter, oh, my mouth's watering right now. <laughs> if I got lobster with that drawn butter, you know, I thought that was rich people food. And, and so, it, you know, I thought rich people ate lobster all the time. And, and so once I had some money, I finally figured out if you eat enough lobster, it tastes like soap. <laughs> you can't get enough cars to, to, to be okay. Winning, winning does not heal you. Becoming wealthy does not heal you. It makes you more of what you already are. Dave challenges the assumption that having more money automatically leads to more happiness. It's a common belief that a bigger paycheck, winning the lottery, or getting a huge raise will make us happier. However, according to Dave, while money is necessary to fulfill our basic needs, it doesn't necessarily equate to more happiness beyond a certain level. 
Research indicates that beyond an annual income of approximately $75,000, salary increases no longer have a direct correlation with greater happiness. This is because true happiness stems from deeper sources, such as a sense of purpose, meaningful relationships and connections, helping others, pursuing passions, and living a generous life. Dave emphasizes that no amount of money can replace good health, a strong spiritual foundation, and the company of loved ones. All the money in the world won't matter if you don't have people to share it with. Again, you can have some nice things, and I'm not against having nice things. Uh, but, but your nice things will have you eventually. They'll eat you alive if that's where you think happiness is, because it's not. By all means, Dave encourages making enough money to provide for one's needs and enjoy life. However, he advises against chasing after money with the misguided belief that it will bring happiness. This approach may cause you to miss out on the things that truly bring lifelong contentment. Instead, Dave suggests keeping money in perspective as a tool to achieve a fulfilling life, but not the end goal. It's a space you know you're comfortable in. You should never put money in something that you don't understand and don't know. And because some guy in a good suit said to, and the only thing he may own is a good suit. So that's probably not where we're taking the advice. Many people believe in the myth that you should invest in things you don't understand. They think it's exciting to speculate and put their money into stocks, real estate deals, or cryptocurrencies recommended by friends without fully grasping how they work. However, Dave disagrees with this approach, as he thinks it's incredibly risky. According to Dave, it's crucial to educate yourself on the basics of investing before committing your hard-earned money to any specific asset. You should understand concepts such as compound interest, diversification, risk versus return, fees, and more. Once you have a solid foundation, you can evaluate the details of any particular investment and its underlying structure. Dave cautions against blindly handing over your money to any hot tip or pitch that sounds too good to be true. Investing requires homework, and while it may seem overwhelming at first, the payoff of better decision-making is well worth it. Dave suggests starting with simple, straightforward investments like low-fee mutual funds and exchange-traded funds. You should establish a firm foundation of core holdings before considering riskier, more complex assets that you don't fully grasp. By taking your time and gaining knowledge, you'll set yourself up for investment success for life. Every dollar has a mission, every dollar has a name, not sort of kind of in my head, not it's on my iPhone app. Write it down on paper, on purpose, before the month begins. Every dollar has a name, and if you're married, you agree on that with your spouse. One common assumption is that making more money is the key to building wealth. While it's true that maximizing your earning potential is important, solely focusing on income will not solve your financial problems or lead to riches. To truly build wealth, Dave stresses mastering the other half of the equation, learning to live on less. Controlling your spending is just as important, if not more so, than continually chasing bigger paychecks. Even as your income rises, lifestyle inflation can creep in if left unchecked. By cultivating an attitude of frugality, limiting expenses, and maximizing savings, you can actually accelerate wealth faster than just seeking promotions and overtime. Scaling back on housing, transportation, dining out, and other expenses will free up more capital to put toward debt payoff, investing, and reaching financial goals. Mastering your spending is just as important as increasing your salary. So, it's important to strike a balance between reasonable earning and disciplined cutting back on costs to achieve the fast track to wealth. Dave debunks the myth of focusing solely on the income side. Generosity with these folks, with these millionaires that we studied, is a steady thing, like their savings is a steady thing. They're not trying to have this one big event that says, look at me, how generous I am. Instead, they're fairly quiet about it, almost absurdly quiet and anonymous about it, and they steadily give in to something that they believe in. Dave often challenges the notion that a pricey college degree is necessary to secure a high-paying job in your field after graduation. He believes that the reputation of a university and the cost of its degree do not necessarily equate to higher value in the job market. According to Dave, what truly matters is the skills and knowledge gained while earning the degree. 
He advises high school students to think carefully before taking on student loan debt just for the sake of attending a well-known university. He suggests starting at a community college for the first two years to complete prerequisites at a much lower cost and then transferring to an affordable, in-state public university to finish the degree. Employers value the skills and knowledge gained, as well as internships and networking, more than the prestige of the university. Therefore, it is important to choose an affordable program that aligns with a career path in demand, rather than chasing the illusion that an expensive degree alone guarantees a high salary after graduation. It is not worth mortgaging your future for the sake of prestige. Dave emphasizes that financial independence can be achieved by taking control of your money rather than being at its mercy. So start today by making smart financial decisions and believe in your ability to create wealth. Remember that the key to wealth is not just about making money, but also about being smart with it. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.